When scientists and farmers work together, they can achieve a high production partnership. That's why the Minnesota Soybean Research and Promotion Council has nearly 20 research projects underway with scientists at the University of Minnesota. Let's see how some of these research projects can lead to smarter soybean farming. Every year, weeds are a big part of our challenge out here to raise a good crop. We use Roundup, about two sprayings per year. We'll spray in about three weeks and we'll spray again three weeks later if time permits and weeds allow for that. Uh, what has the University of Minnesota been doing recently for weed control? The main push based on our research, the University of Minnesota, and just looking at the weed crop interactions and weed biology is first and foremost in soybeans, get back to early season weed control. First, post-emergence would be two to three inch weeds, not four to six inch weeds. Okay, target earlier. And the other is to help in this is pre-emergence herbicides, especially in some of the fields of greatest concern with some of our more troublesome weeds. The results of not using the broad spectrum advantages of a pre-emergence herbicide are pretty dramatic. This is a perfect example of a significant weed flush in soybeans uh, that it has not had any pre-emergence herbicide on it. The plan is total post weed control, likely with glyphosate in this particular case. By next week, you'll have most in that two to three inch range. And with this kind of density, this number of weeds, this is nothing to mess around with. This is something you want to get on early. The other thing that's important to know is getting right herbicide for the right weed. That is the systemic versus non-systemic. You need systemic here, but you need it at the right time. Roundup is a systemic herbicide. It moves in the plant, so it has a chance of getting down into these underground structures and killing more of the plant. Ignite which is tied to the Liberty Link soybean, is a non-systemic herbicide. It just kills plant material that it comes in contact with. So it gives you great satisfaction to see it turn brown and die, but it's not moving anything down here where the new growth can come from. So here we have a pigweed species, and if we don't have any residual weed control down, like with a pre-emergence herbicide, we tend to have these flushes go later into the seasons. What's happened over the last few years is that the post-chemistries like glyphosate have been very successful on larger weeds, and we've kind of forgotten the fact that early weed control is still our most profitable, and if you're going for highest yield potential, it's the way to go. So early post-emergence weed control, pre-emergence chemistry, and then finally the third one, and that one is harder for a lot of people to follow, but it's simply diversification diversification of weed management tools. Crop rotation is probably a very strong thing to consider in your weed management plans. You know, is it just corn, corn soybeans? If you get an alfalfa in there, a perennial crop, start to break up the weed life cycle, or small grains. These are some things that can really help diversify your weed management practices in a non-chemical sense. There are mechanical weed control tools available. I know with the size of acres and the time restrictions of narrow windows for some of these, but we do have rotary hose for weeds that are just starting to emerge. But if you're in road beans, 30 inch row, 20 inch row soybeans that you can get in with an inter-row cultivation, those things can still be a, a lifesaver. And I think another aspect that gets forgotten, and it's actually like getting something free, is if you do your weed control early, and give the soybeans a head start. So you get a good crop canopy, and then a weed tries to get through that, it's much more difficult. So in a sense, you're getting free weed control. And so then that leads to the next non-chemical approach, and that is for those that weeds that do escape, and hopefully they aren't many, still walking fields, pulling out weeds, um, you know, in July, August, I know it's not a treat, but it's long-term benefits versus short-term pain. In the end, plant breeders and others create yield potential. All weed, managed, weed scientists do is we protect yield. We can't generate new yield for you. We protect yield. And again, the best way we know to do that is do your weed control early. As soybean farmers, when you transform discoveries from science into higher yields in the field, you're providing the world with an abundant supply of safe and affordable food. 
You're advancing America's energy security through renewable biofuels. And you're protecting the environment by sustaining natural resources and building Minnesota's economy through higher productivity and profitability. The Minnesota Soybean Research and Promotion Council is proud to support public agricultural research. Mm -hmm.